Today, actually, I want to walk you through the journey, my journey, the past five years of doing business in Indonesia. Um, I was born and raised in Indonesia, fortunate enough to go to the U.S. to get my education, get my bachelor degree and graduate degree from the U.S., managed to work in Wall Street for six years, and then I came back because I just want to be an entrepreneur. I think that entrepreneurship just run in my blood and my, same with my dad, you know, it just come in the family. But when I came back, like every Indonesian, we're aware that corruption is part of doing business. You know, from getting traffic ticket, bribe the police on the spot, all the way to getting permits to get your KTP or your ID, to get license of doing business, name it. There's always about giving money for the officials to do their job. I came back here, run, bump into my partner Rezal Kusuma at Maja in year 2007. He threw me the idea of saving the rainforest, conserving the rainforest and restore and make money out of it. I said, wow, that's a very noble idea. You know, I can fight the global, you know, I can save the world, make money and make people happy. Thanks to Al Gore, for promoting this climate change issue. In year 2007, actually, people are start talking about climate change, how it affected our life in the future. They predicted that you know, if we are still on the path of where we are going now, burning fossil fuel, not, no recycling, do all that stuff, we might be going to a wrong path. So there's an incentive for somebody trying to protect and restore forests and get financial benefit. Coming from a background of Wall Street, I thought, wow, this is great. This is the new commodity class. You now we have equity, we have debt, we have real estate. Now we're going to have a climate change commodity, 2007. Well, this is something that I should get into. I managed to, you know, to convince myself, my partner convinced me too, that this is a noble idea. So what's next, I said. Next is basically we have to look for a forest to conserve and to protect. We have uh, identified a forest in Santa Kalimantan, about 200,000 hectares, which is, just to give you a comparison, is about three times the size of the island of Singapore. And then this is a peat swamp forest. What is a peat swamp forest? Peat swamp forest is actually a forest that stored carbon below. I would call it a very young coal. You know, if 10,000, 20,000 years from now, this will be a coal mine. So it stored a lot of carbon that we have to protect. If we don't protect this forest, there will be huge emission coming up from this forest. This is what we're trying to do. It's in Santo Kalimantan, 200,000 hectares, and then we can actually reduce about 10 million tons of carbon every year. Just to give you an example, Singapore emit about 30 million tons a year. So by saving this rainforest, we actually save one third of emission from Singapore. This will make us one of the biggest global forest project in the world in terms of carbon credit. So I said to myself, wow, this is, you know, global player, make money, save the forest, and what else? We save these guys. You know, by saving the forest, we save the biodiversity. We also have to make sure that the livelihood of the community intact. You know, basically, this is like a great story coming out from this. It's like only in textbook when you go to school, you said, oh, where you get profit for the company, environment, and community. So I said, well, this is, this, is, this is a great proposition. I'm Indonesian. This is something that we can do. So I said, okay, what's next? Next is in Indonesia, if you want to manage a forest land, you have to apply a concession to the government. In this case, you have to apply to Minister of Forestry because they have the mandate to give forest concession to a company, a person, or even a foundation. So I said, okay, that shouldn't be hard, right? Even though back in my mindset, oh, there'll be a lot of corruption here. You know, people will be asking money left and right. I said, no, well, let, well let's see. Let's see what, can, what I can find out. Next, I said, okay, forest land permit process. People claim that it's a source of unlimited corruption. $2.3 billion lost every year because of this process. So I said, gee, 
what am I getting myself into? <laughs> if I don't bribe these people, then I don't get things done. But I strongly believe in the idealism that, what, that, what, that what we're trying to do. So we have to apply a concession. We have to basically submit the application to the government with our project plan, what we're going to do in this 200,000 hectares of land. And then the following chart is just showing you the process of this concession. So here we are. The journey started in May 2008. If you read the regulation carefully, in one year you should get everything done, max. They even have certain dates and do all that stuff. So I said, okay, one year, I can calculate the risk, right? By not bribing, by doing all the good things. One year, we'll be out, we'll be selling credits, we'll save the world. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> if you look at the chart, one year later, we are only being invited to present our proposal. Okay, but at least it's a good thing, right? They, they, that they're interested, that they think that we are qualified. And guess how many signatures that is being needed from, May, from that process of May 2008 till June 2009? 200s. So when I'm talking about 200, it's like basically our application from go from desk to desk to desk to desk. Somebody take a look at it, sign it, initial it, back and forth, 200s. So I said, well, and these people, I mostly met them. The only way is not to bribe the government official is to show yourself. Just have no shame. Talk to them. I'm interested. This is my company. This is what I do. And uh, a funny story is basically I have encountered one government official. And you can tell from the beginning, from the language, that he's expecting something from me. So I went there at 8.30 in the morning. I said, my name is Darsono. My application is in your desk. And he said, OK, I'm busy. So I said, OK, it's OK, you're busy, fine. When he left his office at 5, I was still waiting outside. I said, what are you doing? Oh, maybe, you're not, maybe you have a chance to do it today. Maybe you're, you might be efficient today, get all this thing done. No, 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 no. I said, fine. And then the next day, I showed up again at 8.30. So like, what are you doing here? Maybe he's expecting me to give him a white envelope, a brown envelope maybe, I don't know. But he said, oh, maybe today you're not busy, sir. And he's just like, at 5.30 the next day, when he came up from his office, I was still there waiting. So I guess he's just get tired of me. <laughs> he's just tired of me and said, I want to get this guy out from my side. So what he does, he finally get the things done. He's, he signed the papers, moved it to his supervisors, and the funny story is, a week later, I was in a conference where the Minister of Forestry is opening the, con the conference. As he walked into the, the, the stage, he saw me, he pat my back. Hey, Darsono, how was your application? <laughs> the guy that a week ago I met, sitting right behind me. And I said, no, no, everything is okay, sir. You know, we're just plowing along. I said, let me know if you have any problems. <laughs> I can see his face. He's like, what am I going to get myself into? Will I be relocated tomorrow? But uh, what I'm trying to say is the moral of the story of this is used to be if you know the minister, you can get things done. Or providing you give the white envelope, of course. But I guess I know the minister, but I don't use that against him. I go and wait. So that's basically show how serious and how persevere I am. He came to me and apologized. He said, I'm sorry, you know, I was really busy that day, so I cannot do this. So I said, okay, these are the things that we have to do. If you decided to go for your idealism not to bribe, there's a lot of ways that you can do about by not giving the money. But of course, it required perseverance. So I said, okay, that's June 2009. We received this letter saying that, you know, you become the prospective concession holder. So you're like, okay, nobody can take this anymore from us. That's great. So you think, oh, it's almost there. Guess what? Almost three years later, we supposedly in that letter saying that you have 150 days to finish this task. Three years later, we only move one step. The reason is because the local government is not in line with the central government. While the concession is given by the central government, the local government object to it, which is very typical in Indonesia. So I said, 
okay, well, we've been waiting for one year. Let's push it. Let's just push it, and we, you know, we keep on doing it. Finally, from February 2012 to June 2012, guess how many more signatures that we need from here? Another 150. So another 150 people that I talk to, that I go door to door. I might be a good salesman, but this is crazy. You just go to door to door with these guys. Of course, I didn't have to do waiting for two days anymore because these people start knowing us. They know how serious we are. And I said, okay, so we got things done. But what I'm trying to tell you is there's a lot of people like us, even though in a very small scale in Indonesia. The younger generation believe that in order to do a long-term business, it's better not to bribe. Because, first of all, it doesn't guarantee that you'll get the job done. Second of all, it'll haunt you back. They'll come to you knowing that you have this sin. They'll just keep on pounding back, and they'll even threaten you. You know, with all this law enforcement happening, you think that, yeah, this is a good long-term solution that we have. But we need more people. We, you know, we have, to, we have to fight this fight. Because only if the players, the private sector is doing it, it, it takes two to tango. One has to receive and one has to give. If the giver stop, the recipient will not ask anymore. That's, uh, that's what I think that we have to do. So if you look at this journey, if you ask me again, in 2007 when I started this, hey, Darsono, we're going to do this business, we're not going to bribe. I said, impossible. Even me, I'm not a believer then. Because in Indonesia, everything is about giving money for certain people to get things done. But I'm a living proof of this. Only takes me <laughs> four years, you know, but I am living proof. What I'm saying is we are moving for a better direction. Indonesia is moving for a better direction. So only us, if we want to do it, we can do it. So guess after all these 350 signatures, you know, from May 2008 till June 2012, you said, is Darsono done? Nope, <laughs> not yet. We're only missing one signature, just one signature. And I am very optimistic that we'll get it. So thank you.